All right, part two of my weekend at ShadowCon 2012. And for a brief summary of part one, the only good things I took away from the weekend are the things that the convention had absolutely no part in. That, here, if I pull up my little cheat sheet, that will give you an example of just how bad everything went. And it starts as soon as we book into the, as, as soon as we check into the hotel. Now, we did the math on this hotel, and, we, you know, we were trying to figure out, because it's me, it's me, Danielle, John, and Shauna, we're trying to split this thing four way, four ways, so, but it's a hotel, so there's always going to be fees and taxes tacked on, we're not really, and it's hard to tell how bad it's going to be until you're actually there, which I hate. The ho you know, and this might have just been a breakdown of math on our end, but the hotel ended up being thirty dollars more expensive for each of us than we were prepared for. Or Shauna barely had the cash on hand for it. I mean, uh, I wasn't prepared to pay the extra thirty. It was a good swift kick in the nuts right from moment one, and it was the red flag for the entire weekend. The hotel itself was just. Because uh, at first it didn't seem so bad. I mean, it's a smaller room than the hotel that ShadowCon had last year. But the way it was laid out, we could actually all have places. You know, some of us were on a bed, some were on air mattresses. And there was a path. You know, there, you know, there was actual open space where we could actually move around. You know, and that actually made, you know, the, the hotel a lot more convenient. What didn't make it more convenient was trying to deal with the staff in any way, because this place was not not good. Uh, there's no microwave or mini fridge in the room, so uh, John and Sean had to bring their own microwave from home. Uh, we had to rent a mini fridge for ten bucks, and the mini fridge didn't work. Woke up on Sunday trying, to, you know, woke up on Sunday. Uh, wanting to finish off, the, you know, finish, you know, dig into, uh, you know, the rest of the food. There was, you know, homemade spaghetti in there, meats, cheeses, all types of things. All of it went bad. All of it spoiled. Fifty dollars of food completely gone. You know, and us scrambling to find something for lunch that day. As a result, they comped them. You know, that got comped thankfully, but. Uh, not, uh, it took forever just for someone to hand Shauna a $50 bill, which is disgraceful. And, every, you know, everything just went south. When we were trying to check out that day, we, they, uh, because the carts were limited, they wanted to charge for using a car, for using a luggage cart, which I get, I get, you're short on luggage trolleys, you know, okay, I know, it's a busy con, everyone's trying to check out at the same time. I got that. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, they charged per item that you put on the trolley. Which makes no sense, A, because whether I'm carrying one or twenty things, I'm still using only one trolley. So, you know, it's, it's not like that, well... You, you put 30 items on this, now we have to pay to replace the wheels. No! You know, we had like 30 items that had to go on the trolley. And Shauna, uh, for those unaware, Shauna is six months pregnant. You're not going to tell the pregnant lady she has to pay up for a trolley or else she has to carry her own bags down to the, down to the car, which was another nightmare because in order to actually get to the parking garage, we had, you know, we had to, uh, well, first you had to take your elevator down to the floor with the sky bridge, go across the sky bridge into a different hotel, go through there, through another sky bridge, that got you to the parking garage where you have to elevator to wherever you are at that point. And pity the poor fools who tried to go without a trolley. I don't want to know how bad that would have been. You know, you know. It's it was and the whole reason the whole reason they moved hotels was because last year was congested. You know, there were a lot of people. It was a small hotel. I get that. 
this hotel solved none of those problems because not only were not only was it still crowded, it was impossible to get up uh, elevator most days. It didn't help the layout of the convention either. There wasn't any space in the hallways for everyone to go through from forward and back traffic and people waiting in line against the wall for panel rooms to open up. Just in like I don't know and the only way the way they laid it out, you know, like the dealer's room was bigger this year, but it only had one entrance and exit. You know, as opposed to like last year was a smaller dealer room, but you went in, you walked the path, you went through, and there was an exit. There was an entrance and an exit. And this year, there was there's only one way in, one way out, which caused an enormous amount of traffic. And the artist alley was right outside the door, which made it even worse. And that was the most open part of the entire room, and entire convention hall, and it was packed the entire weekend. Uh, and narrow little hallways where all the panel rooms were. None, you know, you couldn't get in and out. It was such a zoo in there. And I, I mean, I wear a common, you know, I wear one of my common writer belts usually around the weekend. And most of the weekend, I had to keep it in my con bag just to make sure it didn't get damaged or bru or scratched up. Trying to get through all of these people, it was just an absolute mess. Pity the poor people who wore these huge costumes with all these handmade bits that are probably not in very good condition right now. You know, so the hotel was a mess. The hotel was not not hospitable in the least. You know, from the staff, from the layout, everything. And that just caused even more problems. Let's get to the con itself though. And the main problem with the con was all scheduling based because I don't know why they got this into their heads, but everything, everything was booked so tightly that there was no room for error. So when things went wrong, they had no answer to it. They had no, yeah, they couldn't do anything except delay panels and cancel them or cancel them completely. So, and I know these things happen at cons, but in all of my time going to MetroCon, I, yeah, she's, all my time going to MetroCon, I didn't run into as many problems at those conventions combined as I did at ShadowCon this year alone. It, just absolutely, absolutely horrendous. Uh, you had, uh, well, first off, there was the hotel that continued to cause problems because they double booked events. So one of the rooms had to be, you know, so... They were trying to clear people out of one room. It caused, an, it caused a big delay before opening ceremonies. And you had uh, one panel room that had to be moved to a different room you know, and then moved back. And your opening ceremonies, they brought up the guests. They brought up all the people who were having the big panels. And almost all of them had to report a change in schedule. I mean, when that is how you start your weekend by telling everyone going that, hey, all your con guides and all the poster boards we set up outside telling you where to be at what times, all of it's invalid. All of it's invalid. It's totally up in the air. No idea. You know, you, no one knew when anything was going on. You, 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 couldn't, you couldn't even find anything. Like, it was like, uh, man, I, I, we couldn't figure out heads or tails of how to read even read the con map. It was so badly laid out. It took forever to, you know, most people... Uh, took forever to even find the autograph room, because well, because they didn't label it for most of the weekend to start with. <sighs> and there were so many other reasons it caused delays. Uh, well, one you had Shadowfax working it. You know, most of the tech delay. You know, so there was a, there was a ton of tech delays. You know, just because everything. You know, because I I don't know why they keep hiring the guy. Metrocon got rid of him, and this year's ran so much smoother without him, and. ShadowCon hired him, and things ran badly. You know, and I'll get I'll get into it more because some may or may not be all of his fault. But I do, you know. But I, you know, I heard it from I heard it directly from the staff. They were complaining about how shadow how long ShadowFax was taking. So you had so many delays. You had so many panels canceled. I don't think there was one guest panel 
that you know there's there were like three different panels that were supposed to be all the voice actors together and that's always a great thing to see them all interact together no one uh not one went off correctly they were either canceled or uh johnny young bosch wasn't able to make it because they overbooked him which was such an enormous issue the all the guests were completely overbooked you had most of them had like six panels and three autograph signings on top of all the press and media stuff they had to do as well as you know that whole eating and sleeping thing that I don't even think Shadow God was concerned about you know I got to talking to o Uncle Yo who was there on Sunday and even he knew something was you know this was not going right because you know Sunday he got he got his first free hour of the entire convention which is terrible to do to your guests because they are not you know they're there to be guests too they want to go roaming around and find things to do as well you know because you know it's you know it should be fun for them too instead shadow con you know shadow con treated them like tools they you know used them wadded them up and threw them away so overworked so overbooked i feel i feel so bad for the guests this year because the, the the schedule they had them on was ridiculous it was it was just com total disrespect from the convention oh god what else well let's oh yeah reading my little cheat sheet off, off, off my monitor then there was how they treated me see I went as press and this is probably the only reason I was going to go to ShadowCon was because a I wanted to visit Scott, and B, I didn't want to pay for my ticket. So, I, you know, uh, having some credentials actually does help out in that. I went as press, so I wanted, you know, I had interviews to book and everything and things like that. Every single interview w went bad because no one told the guests about the interview schedule. Whoever booked the interview schedule didn't clear it with who was booking the event schedule. It was left hand not telling the right hand what to do. Total communication breakdown amongst the entire staff. No one, like, <clears throat> God. It just went so terribly. Like, I got, I got an interview with Scott, but that's because it's Scott. He's a friend. He'll make time, he'll make time for it. But, uh, my Doug Walker interview, it, it was supposed to be Saturday at 9.30. Got and I didn't find out that it had to be rescheduled until five minutes before that. So it got rescheduled to 2.30, where it was double booked with another press, uh, you know, another press group that was there. Uh, didn't, uh, didn't get the interview I wanted. I had to rush through it, because I, I had, I, I took a lot of time to carefully write out how this interview was going to go, so it could be a little goofy and improv -y and it could be funny, it could be entertaining. You know, it would take advantage of who I was interviewing, because Doug will play off of that when it when it's done correctly. But because I was lacked on time, because they rushed me through, go, just go, go, just talk. He's got a panel. Go, go, go. The interview was crap. Like, to the point where i probably not going to post it. And I'm, I'm not going to post it for two reasons. Number one, I don't want to give them the satisfaction of the promotion. Uh, here's here's the interview with Doug Walker done at ShadowCon 2012. Screw it, fuck it. I, I'm I'm not going to give them that satisfaction. I mean, I'm not going to let them draw that name value. And the other reason is it just came off like so so terrible. If you know my if you know how I am, uh, the video has to come off exactly the way I want it, or I'm not happy with it. You know that the, I I get so perfectionist when it comes to what I'm putting out for you guys. If it's not the way I wanted it to be, you're not going to see it. You know, luckily the Scott interview went off great. I think it's better than the than the one I got at MetroCon. Uh, but no, the Doug one you're probably not going to see because it uh, it, it was terrible. It, it was just a total lost opportunity. It really, really annoyed me. And then there's the other one, Johnny Young Bosch. Just so everyone's aware. I can find it here. Everything's still scattered out from the convention. Uh, Johnny Young Bosch, hands down, favorite Power Ranger. 
you know, I bought a shirt, and that's not it. Screw it. I bought a shirt off of, you know, screw it. I'm going to find this freaking shirt. Because I want you to know what I went through this weekend and just, you know, what disappointment this ended up being. It's here somewhere. I was wearing it yesterday. God, I'm crawling every black shirt I've got, except the one I'm actually after. Here, here we go. Here we go. Slight delay. I want you to see what I did here. This came off of Ripped Apparel. See that? Yeah, it's a spoof off of a, a, a famous Olympic scene. Yeah, I bought that just because, hey, I'm going to get to meet Johnny Young Bosch, my favorite Power Ranger. Yes, more so than the Green Ranger. I'm, I can't help it. I identified with the guy better. I got to say hi, shake hands with him. That was it. Uh, I had an interview scheduled. Never happened. Shades had an interview scheduled with him. He got about five minutes, and it had to be during an autograph signing, so it kept getting interrupted. It was just uh, such a... It was, it was just an absolute mess. You know, what it, you know, interviews just... Yes, and the guy handling guest relations, I'm not going to give his name... So I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm gonna I'm not gonna give him a name. I'm I'm gonna be classy here. So instead, we're going to call him do uh, we're gonna call him Prick McDouchebag. So Prick McDouchebag. Every time you went up when we first went up to him, he's okay. You know, I got him laughing during the Scott interview. So okay, anyone who laughs at my jokes isn't that bad. Uh, unfortunately. But as the weekend wore on and more problems crept up, you started noticing that the, you know a genuine person came out of that. The the brave face was gone. He would you know every you know, when he went up to him and said, "Hey, uh, we had an interview scheduled for this and this and this," and you go, oh, "Oh, okay, no problem, I'll handle it," and he'd run off. And when you caught back up with him a couple hours later, he'd say, "Hey, what happened to this and this?" And it's like, "Well, uh, no, you have to go clear it with the guest." Why? That's your job. You're you're the you're you're handling guest relations. You're the head of guest relations. You handle the guests. So you'd hunt. You'd go and hunt down the guests, and you, you guess what they did? You'll never guess. They told you to go take it up with the guy in charge of guest relations. You know why they told you that? Because they are running on the schedule that the convention hands to them too. So they can't change the schedule just because you came up and said, hey, we're supposed to have an interview. If You, you can't run it that way because I could have done that the first con I went to, and I didn't own a camcorder at the time. So you, they could have done that. You know, they, they, could, they couldn't do that. So you go back to... You go back to Prick McDouchebag, and he tell you... That, well, no, see... No, uh, you were supposed to tell us ahead of time who you want to interview... We did that. You had to point. You had to bring it up on your phone and shove the email in his face. Look here. Here are the times. This is what you told us to do. And he'd put you off. He'd blow you off every chance he got, because he's just has absolutely just no idea how to run anything in the convention. He had no idea what he's doing. Incredibly underprepared for all of this. And again, it's. The, the whole fault of it is because they overbooked the guest. There is no wiggle room to work in an error like this, which is why things got double booked. And you know, by the end of the weekend, he's by the end of the weekend, you realize the guy is completely blameless. He, he refuses to take any part in why why this went so wrong. Nothing was his fault. He tried to turn it back on you every chance he got. It was just ridiculous. It's absolutely, absolutely unacceptable. You know, you know, I've not, you know, I've not said the guy's name, but I heard he's also running guest relations at Holiday Matsuri this year. If the, you know, to the owners of Holiday Matsuri, I know you're trying to put together a really nice anime con, but you, you know what? That's going to come back and bite you. I'm, I'm sorry, but at some point, this guy is going to damage your convention. 
no, I, I would, you know, I'd never go back to a convention with this guy anywhere in charge. And that goes back into another root problem. Let's talk untrained staff. Let's talk about volunteers handling the security line in, at the convention who have no idea how to handle someone with a press badge. No idea how to handle any badge that isn't just a weekend pass. Let's put it that way. Because you'd have, you'd have these huge long lines of people waiting to get into an autograph booth or waiting to get into a panel and no, the VIPs aren't pegged out. And when they realize that, they go, oh, where do we put the VIPs? You know, the hallway is barely big enough for two people anyway. So what are we going to do with the VIPs? Well, they, you know, they'd line them up, you know. They'd have to go through the crowd and go, boom, boom, you, uh, you VIP, you VIP, okay, you VIP, you go over there, you're getting, you there were, you know, nothing was clearly marked out, and there was no one in charge who knew what to, knew how to handle it properly, and keep everyone out of the way, and keep everything flowing correctly, and when you came up to a press badge, you might as well have seen sparks fly out of their head, because it just completely derailed them. Some knew what they were doing. Some knew that if I have a press badge, that means the con trusts me to go and get access into areas at times when the other normal guests can't because they understand that as press, I need to get in ahead of the crowd so that I can set up, I can adjust for lighting, I can adjust exposure, white balance, whatever. I can adjust, I can run extension cords to make sure I get the whole thing. It's, it's supposed to tell them this is someone we, as the con the convention management, trusts. They're not going to get in the way of the setup. They're going to go, you know, and they need the time to set up too. But then there were people who wouldn't let me in until after the VIP line goes, which makes no sense. It completely defeated the point of the entire ba of the press badge. And then you also had everyone who was. You you also had you then you had the people who didn't know what to do at all. There were some line there were some doors where the security guy didn't have any idea what to do with me. Like I'd stand in front of the door for like 20 minutes before someone before he'd give me a straight answer. Just wholly, wholly and entirely unprepared and uh, completely untrained. No no idea what to happen. And again, that goes back to no communication amongst the management and the staff. Nothing, nothing was said between anybody to get or, get this organized. Or there was no hive mind. You know, you know how everyone is supposed to think like, okay, this security guard is supposed to think exactly like this security guard because they they're supposed to have been told the same thing. Nobody was told the same thing. Nobody. Ah, jeez. I'm gonna burn out my throat talking about this convention. <sighs> now, and that also, you know, it boils down to, you know, there were more tech issues. Um, the main event, the Shadow Tournament, which <laughs> anime and video characters fighting in choreographed battle scenes on stage. Haven't seen that before. <sighs> you know, I know it's a common thing. It's a medieval fair thing. Whatever. Or, <sighs> they couldn't even get the videos to play. Like half the videos at the Shadow Tournament wouldn't play. Half the time you'd see just like windows on, you know, you'd just see windows on someone's, you know, uh, iBook that was handling this in the back. You'd see like a corner of the video that's supposed to play. Lucky, we were lucky we got to hear the audio. Whoever was playing the minions from Venture Brothers for this performance, I feel so bad for them because their only appearance was, uh, with their own appearance was on the videos and it was supposed to be this really funny bit but all we heard was the audio so it made absolutely no sense and when they came out with the rest of the cast go hey, hey, hey you could hear the audible pity from the audience because no one knew when these guys were supposed to have actually been in the show really really screwed up Really unfortunate. And, you know, that's just the stuff I had first-hand account of. That's just the stuff I witnessed. I heard so many more problems with the staff. I heard so many more problems with the mishandled security. Someone on Sunday told me that there was a drug issue at the rave. 
which I know is a problem that anime cons can have, but I'll tell you this, there was no drug issue, no drug problem came up at MetroCon's rave this year. You know why? Because the staff is properly trained. People know what the people know what the fuck they're doing. So, and that's a much bigger rave, much bigger crowd. So there's no reason ShadowCon should have screwed it up that badly. Again, I'm just going off of what I heard, but I have absolute, I have no reason to distrust it or discount it. And yeah, the worst, the worst offense by far was the worst offense by far. Let's talk gross negligence. Let's talk about the complete disregard that this con that this con had for its performers, because the performers worked their ass off. Let, let me separate them from the batch because uh, the, the, the stage performances were all really good. You know, they're all very well rehearsed and I got to see some of the rehearsals and they were all very professional about it. They were all very good. Um, you had, uh, God, you know, you had a breakdance performance. Went off great. Uh, all that, that was, that's fine. The performers are not at fault for any of this. But... <laughs> you did have issues. Uh, the stage nearly collapsed at the Shadow Tournament. Round two. Okay, that's an accident. That can happen. But, you know, something went wrong there. But, again, it's a... It's, it's the red flag that's supposed to tell you, jump ship now. The big issue was the Shadow Warrior competition. Someone, someone got it in their head. So let's do Ninja Warrior at ShadowCon. So they like did auditions at what looked like a playground, which was some of the silliest things I've ever witnessed in my life. It's just, this is where you just see what a Mickey Mouse routine this was. Because Shadow Warrior on stage was built with about $50 worth of stuff from Home Depot. Uh, you, you had things that made sense. Like they did something called Ninja Steps where you had to bounce off these very small platforms and walk across, you know, this like wooden assembly they did. And that's, that's okay. But you had a po but then you had a pogo stick contest. You had a pogo stick contest. It's like obviously they're trying to work in more events, but they had not time or budget to figure out what else to do. Where they had to bounce around on stage with a pogo stick and bounce inside little boxes taped off on the floor. And one problem with this is on the far side of the stage you had two ladders laying down on the floor that were set up for another challenge they were going to do afterwards. So they're bouncing past these two, you know, very awkwardly bouncing on a pogo stick past two ladders, which is dangerous enough. But the track that they had to follow on this pogo stick curved. It was a U shape. So they had to go to the other side of the stage. And you know what's on the other side of the stage? Nothing! Fucking nothing! It's the end of the stage. They, they, they wanted them to round a curve that was inches away from the edge of the stage while riding a pogo stick. It's just... And I should tell you, there's no crash mats. No one's wearing any padding whatsoever. No precautions were taken whatsoever. And never more clear than when they did uh, the slack rope walk, which... This is this is their budget. They had to have the crowd come in and sit on the platforms, so the so the thing wouldn't fall in when someone tried to walk across the strap. So, uh, God, you could, you could tell this thing was just so thrown together and half-assed. It's just absolutely disgraceful. We had one guy dressed up as Kakashi from Naruto, and this guy was the all-star of this whole thing. And I'll tell you why later. But he was walking across the slack rope, and he starts to lose his balance, and he thinks, well, I've still got enough, let me try to hurry up and get to the other side. 
So he starts running, misses his footing, and at full speed, falls, hits chest first into the edge of the platform. Collapses on the ground, writhing in pain, right in front of me. No one's concerned, by the way. No one's going to check on the guy. You know, he gets up, but he clearly does not want to keep going because he is in visible pain at this point. And next up was, well, a Ninja Warrior favorite, the Salmon Ladder. You know, and this is, you know, you know Ninja Warrior where, like, they take a bar and they kind of hop up the different wooden rungs and you don't know how they do it, but they do it. Well, they, well, for a little bit of authenticity, they built a Salmon Ladder. And by built, I mean they loosely riveted pieces of wood to other pieces of wood. There was no platform where it was all secured to. There were no, there were barely any braces to keep it from wobbling side to side. This is another one where the crowd had to participate by getting around it and then holding it on the sides. But thank God they had someone who was an actual athlete attempt this first because they had someone from American Ninja Warrior there. Because the second he tried to jump to the first rung on the salmon ladder, breaks, whole thing, you know, wood splits down the middle, whole thing shatters. Which, because the thing was built so slapdash, it was just absolutely embarrassing. There was no carpentry skills went into this whatsoever. No accounting for weight distribution or leverage, nothing. It was just a two by, a chunk of a two by four riveted into another two by four. Of course it's going to break. It's not even remotely secure. I know that. I could have built a better one in one afternoon. You know, it's not a matter, you know, if, if you went, got, went up to him and said, well, we didn't have the time to build it. Yes, you did. You, you announced this months ago. It just, God, this is absolutely, thank God. You know, they had to turn it up into a pull-up contest because the whole thing broke so badly. You know, and thank God that didn't break and break someone's back. <sighs> then there's the final event, and you wouldn't think this one would be so dangerous, but Shadow Khan will find a way to make it dangerous and completely, completely reckless. They did handstand walks across the stage. Okay, so it's a balance and endurance thing. It's something the Shadow, it's something that uh, Ninja Warrior might do. Uh, it's uh, uh, for those who watch the show. It's Makoto Nagano's signature way of training, you know, walking across on hands. Okay, and okay, so it's based on the show at least. Ugh, try and keep my voice here. <laughs> okay, so at least it's something based on the show, and it'd be fine just to go oh once across the stage and once back. You know, okay, you get some points. They made it a race, and this is the first time they actually made a race out of any of the competitions. I don't know why, but this stage is barely big enough for all of them when they're standing straight up beside each other. Now, they expect them to all have space while upside down, flailing their legs around, trying to maintain some kind of balance. Um, it didn't go well. It didn't go well at all. You had people... Kicking, you had kicking, you had people kicking each other's legs all over the place. You had, pe you had people falling in front of other people, and it was, it was an absolute train wreck to watch. And poor Kakashi, in the midst of all of this chaos they've created with this completely reckless stunt, falls, tweaks his arm as he's trying to hold his balance, lands on his shoulder, really badly, pops it out of the socket. And the guy is writhing in pain, just absolute agony, you know, and the whole thing stops. And suddenly the entire crowd goes just silent. This is like, you know, you know something really bad just went down. Uh, and, you know, in some, you know, and, you know, they do choreograph fight scenes. They do break dances. So you figure... They're, you know, this, you know, this could happen. You know, you know, not, you know, someone could get hurt. So, you figure they could be prepared for this. What really made me realize just how badly organized this was, and just made me fearful for the rest of the convention, 
and made me fearful for what I had already seen at the convention. No present EMT. No one was on hand to handle a medical emergency. This, these are events where they're having choreographed fight scenes with live steel, with blank gun rounds. You know, if, you know, God forbid someone got cut or injured by a sword or knife, and God forbid someone get, someone's, God forbid someone get, get burned from the flash of one of the blank shells going off. Because there was no one there to, there was no one there to help him. No, oh my. I don't know how long it took for them to even get an ice bag to him. Like, they didn't even have ice ready to go in case someone hurt themselves. Just, it's, it's astonishing just how little thought went into this. It's just, and it, it, it makes me fearful. I hope anyone who was a performer there this year is a little bit more scared of how badly they were treating you and how badly they were, and how little they were concerned about your safety. Because they didn't care at all. They wanted a show out of you. They got it. And to hell with your medical bills afterwards. You know, and, a, you know, cheers to Kakashi because he got up. He performed the break dance not only the, not the day after, but the day, but the same day, that night, he was performing his part at the break dance. And I don't know how. He made it, but you, if you're watching, you are the man. That that was amazing. I don't envy, I don't envy how sore you're going to be for a while, but man, they, they the, the thing is that it should not have happened in the first place, and if it does happen, it should not have been handled that badly. You know, that, you know, the whole place, like instantly the entire place became a hazard. It, it, it was frightening, absolutely frightening. You know, and keep in mind, this is the stuff I witnessed. Who knows what else went on behind the scenes? You know, and I know, you know, events happen at cons you can't control. Problems will crop up, not to this degree. I mean, even from the get-go, police showed up because the hotel was not informed about people showing up in these full costumes with fake guns and swords. You know, it was just, an, you know, they, even, they didn't even clear that ahead of time. It just left and right, up and down, problems all over the place. You know, and it, all, it just, it all falls back to management. Like, from selection of the hotel, from the untrained staff, from the really rude and obnoxious, you know, management that they put in place that wasn't communicating with each other at all. At the end of the day, it all falls on the ownership of the con. You know, and John and Shauna might be friends with the people. Fine, they're gonna hold back. I could give a shit because you treated your performers like shit. You put them in huge amounts of risk with no protection for them, with no with no answer for if they got hurt. You mistreated and abused the guests who took away from their time and their schedule to help your con, and you abused them the entire weekend, ran them ragged, because you couldn't get your own shit scheduled properly. You treated your press like shit, because no one had any idea what we were supposed to be doing there and what we were supposed to be doing for you. All around, up and down, it falls to the management, and it was bullshit. Every bit of it, and I I knew the management was bullshit. I knew the I mean I knew the management was bullshit before this con even happened, because you know why? You know why Scott McNeil was even at ShadowCon this year? Because they asked him to be there in the middle of his panel at MetroCon, and do you know how I know this? Because I was fucking recording it. Oh, uh, we're keeping the beer thing. Yes. Uh, are you going to ShadowCon? Am I going to ShadowCon? Yeah. Gee, no pressure. Because <laughs> no, I don't get to Florida enough. I would love to come to ShadowCon. I need to get the official, and we've already talked, and and uh, yeah, because I certainly don't like coming down to Florida. <laughs> as, ask anyone. And it's not even enough that they interrupted his panel to get him to answer that. But 
you compound that with the fact that the fucker was standing next to me for the rest of the con beside the door because he was waiting for Scott to end and leave because the second he was gone, he was going to chase him down. He was going to track him. The second he was coming to the door, he was going to hound him and he was going to get a yes out of him. Right out from Metrocon's nose. And it was... It was disgraceful. It was abs It was. It's one of the slimiest things I've ever seen. God. You know, if I took away anything, if I took away anything from my weekend, it is an enormous, an undying appreciation for what a tight and professional shift MetroCon runs. I, I feel like I cheated on MetroCon. I, I feel like I. I feel like I cheated on Metrocon with the the younger, cheaper, trashier convention. You know, and Metro, if anyone attached to Metrocon is watching, I am sorry. I am so sorry. You are my first love, and please take me back. I will never be unfaithful again. I will never, ever return to Shadowcon. They could book they could book everyone from my entire childhood. They could have a Beast Wars reunion right there and hold it all weekend. I could get to meet, you know, every voice actor I've ever wanted to meet from David K to, uh, God, uh, you know, David K, Chris, uh, Peter Cullen, uh, God, there's a billion of them, uh, Rob Paulson, uh, God, just, uh, the one that was supposed to be there this year, which was Steve Bloom. God, I wanted to see Steve Bloom. You could book Christopher Sabat. You could book God, Jim Cummings. You could book all of these different voice actors that I've always loved my entire childhood. I wouldn't go. Never again. They've completely burned the bridge. You know, I'm the last person. I'm the last person to go diva over this. I'm the last, you know, I'm the same jackass with a camcorder that I was when I was entertaining 23 subscribers. But when you've got people there with this kind of attention, when you get people there who have an audience within the Tampa convention circles, when you have someone there with a with a seven million view YouTube channel, you don't treat them like shit. Bottom line, you just don't, because they're supposed to be there to help you, and instead, here I am, trying to get as many of you to realize that this con is not one you should ever go to. They don't deserve your attention, your time, your money, anything. Completely, completely, entirely done with them. If you want an anime con, here, if you want an anime con in Tampa at this time of year, if you want, if you want an anime con in Tampa around November, go to Asylum, okay? Asylum is going to be starting up next year. It's handled by Team Dynamite, the same people who run MetroCon. I know the same people who run MetroCon and make sure that it is one of the, it is the best convention that happens in Florida, are going to be running it there. So I have full confidence that it is actually going to be run properly and it's going to be a much, much better weekend than this was. I, and I'm going to be there. I, uh, ShadowCon has lost me completely. You know, I went last year, I uh, went this year, never again. Never again. I'm done. Uh, you know, long live Team Dynamite. Long live everyone who makes MetroCon my favorite place to be. Because you guys made me feel like family. And I love you all for it. ShadowCon made me feel like a nuisance. ShadowCon made me feel like an intruder. And it was, it, ugh. Ugh. Easily the worst weekend I've had in a long, long damn time. Ugh. So my weekend wasn't good. I will be posting some of the ShadowCon footage. Um, not, you're not going to see the Doug Walker interview because, you know, I had they made me rush it so much it turned out like shit. You're not going to see that. You will see the Sky interview because that was funny. You'll see his panel and autograph signing because those were funny. Uh, maybe the Doug and Ego panel. I don't know yet. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to post the shots, the cosplay, and all the, the highlights that I took. 
I really don't want to. I don't. I don't want to give this con any type of promotion or support of any type. They don't deserve it. Not after the weekend they gave me. Not after the bullshit they pulled on everyone who paid to be there. God, I'm pissed off. You know, you're... I'm going to end it here. You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to end it here. And I'm going to go collect Riddler trophies in Arkham City. Because I want to be happy. And beating up the Riddler right now sounds like it would make me really, really happy. So I'm going to end it here. Before I feel like strangling somebody. So... There is your nutshell. There is your full report on ShadowCon 2012. The shittiest place on Earth. And the worst run convention I've ever been to. So, hopefully you took away something from that. And hopefully, uh... Hopefully anyone I met there, I'll meet you at Asylum. Because, God, the place could be on fire and raining shit from the sky. It would still be more fun, because I know the people running it are good people, not prick McDouchebag. So, I will see you then.